Welcome back to Reliable Sources. I'm Brian Stelter. This weekend, we see President Trump trying to change the story, uh, talking not about uh, his own uh, team's connections to Russia, but instead President Obama and whether Obama's administration improperly investigated Trump. Now, let's talk about it with our excellent panel, Kathleen Vanden Heuvel, editor and publisher of The Nation magazine, Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist, uh, and Charles Blow, columnist for The New York Times. So much to discuss here. Molly, let me start with you. Uh, you've seen a weekend of reactions to President Trump's tweets. Uh, how do you feel that the press has reacted to this unusual situation? Well, it seems that the press always react the same way, which is very hysterically to every single thing that Trump says. It would be a little bit nice, and not that it's not frustrating to deal with a president who is so imprecise, who says things without proof. That is very frustrating. At the same time, I think this constant level of hysteria causes people to either tune out or get hysterical themselves. And that's not a great public service. There are real issues at play. We actually have had reporting for months on surveillance of Trump transition people. We haven't gotten a good digging into that story about why we have people both surveying these people and leaking in sort of a coordinated campaign. That is still a legitimate story, even if President Trump d talks about it in a way that is less than ideal. The way he uses language is different from the way that past presidents have used language. The way President Trump personalizes it, uh, says it in a very shocking way, uh, maybe taking off all the edges or all the caveats, that's different, and, and reporters are reacting to it. I wonder, Charles, if, if you feel that you ever get a little hysterical, as, as Molly was suggesting some journalists do. Well, I think, you know, we have to dispense with all euphemisms here about whether or not he's using imprecision in language or not. No, the president is actually lying. And we have to continuously say that the president is actually lying. And that is an assault on the truth itself. And it is, a, it is an assault on the, the legitimacy uh, of the presidency itself. And, and we, what we, another thing you have to remember is that when... Uh, we stop believing in the president. We, you know, that is not just his credibility that's being burned through. That's American credibility that is being burned through. His credibility is inextricably linked to American credibility when he is the president. And we cannot continue to grade him on some sort of curve where we have to translate and sift through the true parts of what he's saying from the parts of that he thinks that he's saying that are absolute provable, demonstrable lies. And, when and you the, say lies, when you say lies, Molly, is that what turns off some of your readers of The Federalist? The Federalist, a right-leaning website, you say that the lack of trust in media comes from, well, for example, saying Trump's lying. Well, or another thing, at the top of the show, Brian, you said that Sessions recused himself in response to the Washington Post story on his testimony. That's actually not true. He recused himself, according to him, because of his involvement in the campaign. He said that explicitly and clearly. Now, do I think you were lying? No, I don't. I think it was imprecise, and I think you, you didn't believe intend... Him? Honestly, I mean, do you really believe that... I mean, he was in the campaign months ago, he knew that months ago, and that he, only one day after the Washington Post story, he suddenly decided to change his mind? I think the question for a journalist is just to report what was actually said. During his testimony, he and also said... you think said, that's enough? Just to report what they say... During his testimony, he also said that he would be going through a review and he would recuse himself at the advice of his staff. He said that the meetings were set up prior. You can't, you can't know what's in people's heart. You can only go by what they say. And so I think it's very much more devastating to say, President Trump said this, here's what the facts say, than to get into this sort of very emotional state of calling people a liar or whatnot. And again, we have all sorts of liars throughout government. I mean, Clapper was on the, on the shows today talking about stuff. This is a guy who lied before Congress when Senator Wyden asked him if the NSA was spying on millions of Americans, he said no. That was, a, that was not true, and he knew that was not true. You know, Eric Holder was held in contempt of Congress for lying about his involvement in a gun-running scheme that led to the murders of, of many people. You know, we didn't see the hysteria that we see right now over Sessions or these other stories. So it would be nice for the media to treat everybody with the same standards rather than just get so caught up. I mean, I, mean, I get that Donald Trump sets people off one way or another, but we have to keep hold of ourselves. That's a tremendous Katrina? amount of... Oh, sorry, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You cut me off before. That's a tremendous amount of deflection. He actually did lie. And in fact, we are, we are reporting on exactly what he said in his own tweets. He did not say that he was responding to reports, which is what Sean, Sean Spicer's uh, statement said after the fact. He did not say that when he was tweeting. He said that Obama himself, not the Obama administration, not, not uh, Justice Department officials underneath Obama, that, that he, Obama himself 
had targeted him specifically with wiretaps in Trump Tower. That is exactly what he said. It is not hysteria. Do not try to put, make that an emotional plea. What it is, it, everyone in journalism, because what our business is, is truth. Without that, without credibility, we don't, ha we don't have anything to sell. There is no business, there's no journalism enterprise without truth. And when that. we see that the truth itself is being attacked, then we must defend the truth from whomever. I take Molly's point at the same time, though, that the bar needs to be high for everybody. If we have a high standard for all parties and all politicians, uh, the audience hopefully will come along with the, on the ride for us. Katrina, let me bring you in on, on something that happened earlier in the week uh, on the 40th day of, of the Trump presidency, this joint address to Congress. I don't know if you were watching TV that night, but here's what I saw on TV that night. A lot of people saying Trump was presidential. So last night we got an hour with President Trump acting presidential. The New Testament Trump. Praising the president's tone. Presidential Trump. Presidential tone. Change of tone. It's the tone and it was the presentation and it was presidential. Presidential. Did, did commentators overreact? Did they actually set the bar too low, have not a high enough standard for President Trump that night? Absolutely. The hosannas to President Trump being able to speak with a teleprompter. Um, this is a president who has waged war on the media, and the pivot of the media was quite extraordinary to watch. Brian, we have just put out a special issue at The Nation, how to cover media, media mm. in the Trump era with a great Doonesbury cover. And its role is to say, whatever your politics, left, right, or center, across the spectrum, the media needs to do a better job of covering President Trump than it did candidate Trump. This is a president who hates to attack the very media, which in many ways helped fuel his win. Media malpractice played a role. We need to find a way now to restore a blueprint of integrity and independence and trust in the media. And that means, Brian, doing our job. You heard from Molly and Charles. The role of the journalist should be to cover fearlessly, fairly, accurately, and remind people why the media is called the fourth estate. There's a role we play. So I just think on the other news of the day, if I could, Brian, mm. you know, Trump has debased our political sphere and discourse with trafficking and conspiracy theories, his use of Twitter. We should cover his tw tweets less. It degrades and debases our work. Journalists should go out and do the work. For example, on his allegations now, as Kathleen Jameson said, he's shifting the burden of proof. But journalists should go out and report, did the FISA court, did the FISA court give a warrant to tap Trump or his associates? He may traffic in conspiracy theories, but journalists need to do the digging, the hard work that makes journalism about accountability. He wants to destroy the infrastructure of democracy and media information. We cannot permit him. So I think it's very important. I disagree with Bill Plant. I think you need to jettison Olympian neutrality. I think you also need to jettison access for journalism and instead replace it with democratic accountability. Well, access is certainly less access useful, journalism. less valuable if a person's in misleading you systematically. Uh, access only goes so far if the person isn't telling you the truth. But there's also, you know, you know you've reported on this, we are seeing a tsunami of leaks in Washington. There needs to be an independent investigation of Russian uh, you know, whether Russia colluded in this uh, election. We do not know. At the moment, we have unsubstantiated, unverified allegations. And it is vital for our democracy and for the interests, national interests of this country. We learn about the leaks. We learn through independent investigation about whether there were any ties because it's polluting our discourse. We are a resilient country. We shouldn't be polluted by this ongoing idea that anyone who questions whether Russia played a role in this election is un-American. I think some of that reporting is happening, to, to your point, Katrina. Molly, let me come to you on one more point here, talking about high standards, also for the press. You know, the Associated Press, under criticism this weekend for publishing Vice President Pence and his wife's private email addresses. Pence wrote the AP a letter, as lawyer did actually write in a letter, asking for an apology. The AP is not apologizing, but it says it took down the email address when it realized that Pence's wife was still using it actively. Is this the kind of story that causes folks on the right, uh, some of your readers perhaps, uh, to have less trust in an outlet like the AP? 
I think it does, but I think it also just speaks to the challenge of our current media environment. I mean, we had so much coverage of WikiLeaks, which was involving stolen information or hacked information. We need to have some pretty clear ethics on how we how we report and who gets caught up in these leaks. Now, it's one thing if you're a very public official and the information is of public interest. I'm not saying that excuses reporting on it, but it's at least a different issue than when you are merely married or the child or something of a public official. I think we should be very clear about what information gets shared and what we what we protect i don't see the need to publish the actual email address the emails were news the address wasn't news charles last thing to you and if i can ask you about this I, i'm a ardent reader of all your twitter feeds i noticed you charles saying you have to rewrite your column all the time now because so much news is happening so quickly just like on a personal basis how do you kind of keep up with all what's going on well, I, I have a I have a, a weird uh, well, I have a Monday column, which is a weird closing yeah. time. So I have to close on Friday. So of course, there's a lot that happens between Fridays and Mondays. <laughs> I love very often, so I often have to rewrite. But 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 you know, uh, one thing that Katrina said that was very interesting to me, which mm. said we have to continue to go out and report this. In fact, James Clapper was on television this morning, director of national intelligence, saying that there was no FISA. War, uh, order for a wiretap. So now you have to go back to this other point, which is whether whether or not the president is saying that Obama was, was behaving illegally. And if you're saying that, that is an incredibly sensational charge. And, and you can't just like push that off into the other kind of mound of things that he has tweeted that may or may not have been true. That's an incredible charge. One president is saying about his predecessor that he has behaved in, an, in a way that is so illegal that it, it kind of adds up to something that is a, a Watergate level. I'm sorry. This is, this is so... This is, a, this is an enormous story. There is no amount of kind of heat that, that we as journalists can bring to it that is too much heat. You, something has to happen this week. We cannot have the, the, the press secretary now come out and say, well, let's let Congress uh, uh, investigate. In fact, my, my understanding of this, and there are other people who may know this better than me, my understanding of this is that if the president actually wanted to know from the, the intelligence community, he could actually know this himself. This, there is no need for uh, in the Congress to investigate for him to know. He may not be able to disclose it, but he could know it. So this idea... That, 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 that this president has said this, this can't right. just be one of the other things. At the same time, Molly was making a point about Clapper's own credibility, so folks do see it in, in different ways. I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you very much. And up next here, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with former Trump advisor Jason Miller. We'll be right back.